Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Root River Community Church. Great to be with you guys this morning. Wasn't worship just so powerful? That was so fun to worship the Lord together. Dan, great word, great word. Hey, I'm excited about this morning. So excited you guys are here. People tuning in online, excited that you're along for the ride as well. Got a couple of announcements for you guys as we begin. I want to turn everybody's attention to the little card that we call the Connect card in the back of a chair near you. That's just a simple and easy way for you to get further connected to the life and the ministry of Root River Community Church. We always say that it's great to come to a Sunday morning experience like this, but if you really want to grow in your faith, you got to make sure that you have three good Christian friends Get plugged into a ministry team. So throughout the week, I want to encourage everybody to get plugged into a Bible study or some sort of smaller group of people to help spur you on in your faith, your relationship with Jesus Christ. I uh, also want to highlight, as Josh already did, the Bible Adventure Family Night coming up this Wednesday. As Josh already did, the Bible Adventure Family Night coming up this Wednesday, July 13th. This is for kids up to age fifth grade and their families to come out and be a part of this. It's kind of a VBS style one night shot. So come on out. This Wednesday, 6 p.m., you can sign up today at the Connect table. I also want to highlight that Saturday, July 16th, is our annual 5K shoebox run as a part of Rushford Days. It's starting right here this year, and you can sign up and find out more information out in the foyer. I also want to highlight that we are having a prayer and worship night happening July 22nd. We've been doing this about once a quarter, led by Morgan Flatness and Aaron Culp, and they do a great job. It's a lot of fun. I want to encourage you to come on out to that. And my last announcement here this morning is we are having a father-son canoe trip coming up on August 5th and 6th. We're having more information as well as a sign-up sheet next week but in the meantime, you can contact Kyle Peterson for any questions. It's going to be a great time. I want to introduce my good friend this morning, Gordy Dobler. He's got a message called, Who Are You? And Gordy has spoken here over the last couple of years a number of times. Every time, I feel like it's a breath of fresh air. Don't you guys feel like Gordy just kind of gives a breath of fresh air as he shares his heart for Jesus? Uh, I got to tell you what, this man loves the Lord so much, and he loves people so much. He loves the Word of God. Gordy, it's always a treat for us to hear your heart. Uh, let's pray for our friend Gordy. Can we do that? He usually asks me to. If you guys could just extend a hand as a way to pray a blessing. Jesus, thank you so much for my friend Gordy. Lord, we pray that you would continue to anoint his words to us now. I pray that our spiritual ears would be open to hearing what you've laid on his heart, God, and what you need us to hear this morning. Uh, Lord, we love you. Lord, I'm praying for that person out in the audience yes. or listening online who's never really made a decision to follow you. They've never really been 100% all in. They don't really know who they are in you. Lord, I pray that through this message, through this word, God, that, they, that their lives would be transformed by the power of your spirit. We love you, Father. Pray a blessing on Gordy now in Jesus' name. We all agreed together and said? Amen. Amen. Hey, before Gordy speaks, can oh, I just please, share? Please. Uh, I just want to say, the Lord is just, it's like, it's, it's like everything is going really fast. Like the, the work of the Holy Spirit is accelerating, I believe, the work of Root River Community Church. And, and I just want to encourage everybody, keep jumping on board. Yep. God is on the move. He loves all these little small towns all over. Um, I, I was in a Bible study in Canton this last week, and the house was full. I was in a Bible study in Preston this week, and it was full. And, and I, I was in a Bible study in Rushford, and there's lots of people. I'm telling you what, all over in these little small towns, God is on the move. And it is so exciting to see what he's doing uh, throughout lots of different local churches, including Root River Community Church. So keep getting plugged in, okay? Are you with me, church? Amen. Amen. Hey, with all that being said, every time I introduce a guest speaker, I say this, let's give them lots of amens, let's give them lots of preach it, preacher, that's good, keep it coming, brother, all those kinds of things. Would you give my good friend, Gordy Dobler, a big, I'm talking about a big, Root River round of applause.
Good morning. Boy, that song was just perfect. The king is in the house. See, it doesn't matter who's standing up here speaking. It doesn't matter what we're worshiping or what songs it is or who's leading or not. It's about the king in the house. The reasons these Bible studies are filling up is because we represent the king. And people are hungry to see the king. People are hungry to, to know the king. They want to know that God is real. You know, even if people are on church in that, they still know there's a God. They may not know how to connect with them or have a good understanding, a clear understanding, but most people really know there's a God. And something is still calling them inside, and it's the Holy Spirit. And that's why this is important, to put the king first always when we come together, no matter who's speaking, no matter if my word is good or not. Speaking of good words, wasn't Jackson amazing last week? I mean, really, who could come up in a flannel shirt and work boots and just bring the word of God? I, I, I watch from home, and I'm like, it's just so solid because you cannot change the word. The word is the word. You know, I, I'm getting closer to retirement. I'm not there yet, but even when I retire, I want to do something part-time. So every once in a while, I look online to see what's out there. and I found this one job where it's cleaning full-length mirrors. And I thought, I could see myself doing that. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you who that's brought by. I just heard that. Um, so today what I want to do, it's, it, it's who you are. See, the world would like to define who we are. Hey, what happened? I looked back there and I said I had 187 minutes. Wow, that went away. <clears throat> so I am not going to, yeah, I am going to. Um, so what I want to do is, who the world says we are is now what the word says we are. So what I want to do is just kind of read the word, because the word will tell us who we are. And not how we feel, but who we are. So I'm going to have a little help this morning. I have my very own assistant, uh, my be beautiful wife, Misty. So if you would give her a big root river, a round of applause. She's the reason I look so good. <laughs> so we're going to read out of Ephesians. And Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus. But you got to remember, the Word is the inspired Word of God, useful for teaching, correcting, training, and bringing us up in righteousness. So when Paul's writing to Ephesus, he's writing to us. The word, spoken Word is for all of us, no matter who the letter is going out to. So if you want to follow along in, your, in the Bibles that are in your seat, you're welcome to. It's the NIV, NIV version I'm going to be reading out of anyway. So I'm just going to be going through the first few verses here and just see who God says we are. So Ephesians 1, starting in verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to God's holy people. Who did he say? God's holy people. So who are we? We're holy. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, I'm not holy, only God is holy. No, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And Paul says, because of Christ, we are holy. To God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. What has he done? He's blessed us. So we must be blessed. I like the visual because if you look back at the number of sermons we've had, we've had the cage up here when Mike did the cage, and then we had the window. I love the window. He's looking in, and he's like, can I come in? You know, the enemy's always crouching at the window of our hearts. Can I come in? Do you have room for me? And then, to me, one of the best ones, Pastor Josh, when he had the dummy up here. And he's like, dude, how you doing? How was church today? And just that blank face. Because we all have that opportunity to come in here and not leave changed. And I thought, oh my gosh, that was so good. So continuing on, uh, who has blessed us in the heavenly, heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him. Uh-oh, we're chosen. Isn't she beautiful? Oh my gosh. Mike does it to Krista, so I can do it to her too. 
For he chose us in him before the creation of the world, here it is again, to be holy and blameless in his sight. We are blameless. Yeah, but what about my past? Your past is in who you are today in Christ. Paul says, no longer do I look. One thing I do, I don't look who I was. I look who I am today in Christ. I am blameless through his blood. In the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Okay, where am I going? Blameless? Okay. Um, in love, there's a lot in this one. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship or daughtership. So he predestined us. We're predestined. We can go do two pages, too. <laughs> and she's my English teacher. She's corrected me on how to say things correctly, how to spell. I do math, and she spells for us. So, Adoption. We're adopted. We were once aliens, and we were adopted. I like adopted because the story of the prodigal son, which really could be the story of the great, great father, it's the prodigal son, when he left and he spent all his money and he had all his fun and everything, when he came back, his words were, I'm no longer worthy to be called his son. I'll come back as a servant if my dad will have me. And his dad, remember, went running out to him, clothed him with a robe, had a feast for him. He says, I adopt you back into my family. Adoption actually means cared for, taken care of by another. Our father takes care of us. Sonship, son and daughters. We're son and daughters. Jesus, when he came back from the grave, he saw Mary. The first person he saw was Mary. And he said to her, go tell my brothers. He didn't say, go tell those guys who ran out on me. Go tell those guys that are still hiding right now. He said, go tell my brothers. They were no longer just disciples following him. He made them equal with him. Go tell my brothers. He called us family. Family was huge in the Jewish society. It was all, it was, everything revolved around family. Jesus says, now you're my brothers and sisters. Now I have paid the price for you to be adopted back. Okay, so sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Isn't it amazing? We are God's pleasure. When I think, of, you can write pleasure and will. When I think of pleasure, I picture God He's sitting up on the throne, and every day he does this. He does. He pulls out his wallet, and my picture is in his wallet, because he's so pleased with me. He's so pleased. What did he say to Jesus? This is my son, who I'm well pleased with. Twice he spoke that from heaven. This is my son, who I'm well pleased with. Hear him. He's pleased with me. So he pulls out his wallet, and he pulls my picture out, and he shows the angels. He lines them all up and said, this is my son, Gordy. He's my pleasure. This is my son, Chase. I am so pleased with him. This is my daughter, Wanda. I love her so much. Look at him. And all the angels do that every day. They look at our picture every day because the Father is so pleased with us. Oh, we're doing good. And we're his will. Isn't that something? We're his will. We're his want to. He wants us to be back with him. From the day he created us, Remember, uh, where was it? From the very beginning, um, before the foundations of the world, he knew us. Before he made the world, he knew us, and we were his will. Continuing on, um, in him we have redemption. Are we keeping up? Am I out with that? In him we have redemption. Well, if we have redemption, then we're redeemed. Redeemed actually means, I just learned this a couple weeks ago, it means Bought back and brought back to our original value. We have been brought back and bought back by the blood of Jesus to who we were to begin with before we ate the tree, before sin entered the world. That's who we've been brought back to. He no longer sees us as wretched sinners. He sees us as redeemed, brought back to our original value. In him we have been we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We are forgiven. That's part of our identity. It's like, oh, yeah, but I sin every day. No, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. That's who you are. It's not 
what happens. It's who you are. It's part of your identity. Forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. I love this. That he lavished on us. He lavished on us. He poured everything out in good pleasure with lavish. Here's how I like to look at lavish. I asked Missy if I could share this. So lavish. So once, one day out of the year, usually in the winter after Christmas, when, when, when all the winter clothes are like on clearance, we only shop at clearance racks, I, I take her out shopping for the whole day. We leave about 8 o'clock in the morning, and we stay shopping till 8, 9, at night till the store is closed, or until she says, honey, I've had enough. I've had enough. <laughs> because I love her. I lavish that day with her. Just anything you want. It's kind of funny. Who's seen Pretty Woman? Remember when she comes out, she's modeling all the clothes, you know, and everything, and that's my pretty woman. I, I get a man chair, and I sit there, and she tries clothes on for him, and I'm like, anything you want, honey, anything you want. I'm lavishing my love on her, and God does the same thing. He's like, you're my kids. I love you. I want to lavish everything that I have. It says, with all spiritual blessings, all spiritual blessings are ours. That's a God that lavishes his love on us. Is that all of them? Yeah, because you doubled up on pleasure and will. You did great. Isn't she amazing? Vanna White better look out. <laughs> then to finish this, I'm going to skip ahead, Jacob. Um, in Ephesians 1.11, so that's just nine verses out of one book in the Bible of God telling us who we are. This is so neat. And in the message translation, Ephesians 1.11, I love what this says. It's in Christ we find out who we are and what we are living for. It's in him. It's in him we see that this is us. It's in him we find out why we're living. He said, the things I do, you do now. What is it? Love people. What Jesus did every day when he was here, he loved people. And he loved them well. And you're like, yeah, but Gordy, I don't feel like this. I, don't, I can't relate with this because I don't feel holy, blameless. I don't feel like a son of God. I, I don't feel redeemed. I don't feel 6'4 every day. I don't feel bald every day. I don't feel 62 every day. But what's the truth? The truth is I'm six foot, bald headed, and I am 62. So what's the truth for you? This is who you are. This is really who God says you are. The Bible has 66 books, and if you go through it, the whole thing is about who he is, and who you are, and the relationship he wants to have with you. Oh, I'm doing really good on time. Man. So let me teach this out a little bit. So in the beginning, there was Adam and Eve. We'll just say this is the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? God said, if you eat of the tree, that day you will surely die. They're on this side of the tree. They haven't eaten it. Satan comes. He deceives them. And they eat the tree. God comes, did you eat the tree? Well, they started the blame game. It was, it was her, it was him, and they didn't take responsibility, but yet they ate the tree. Did they die that day? God said, you'll die that day. You eat the tree. Well, is God a liar? No, what died that day? Something did die. Who we were died. We were no longer holy, blameless. We separated ourselves from the Father through sin. We separated our sonship, our daughtership now. We were no He put us out of the garden. So this is what died. Our identity, who we were created to be. We no longer looked like his image anymore. We were created in his image, and God is love. So we were the image of love. Now through sin, we stepped away out of that. Jesus comes. He who knew no sin became our sin so that we now could be the righteousness of God. We didn't like, look like anything like this once we sinned. 
Jesus was beat beyond recognition, it says. Beat, marred more than any other man. So he no longer looked like himself. We didn't look like ourselves through sin. He took on our sin. He didn't look like himself anymore. He took on our sin and put onto us his righteousness. He gave us back our identity. We were here, we ate the tree. Now we're sinned and we're out of the garden. Jesus comes, he takes our sin. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the, the world. He took it all away. There's not one thing you could have done that's not taken away. Everything is taken away. So now through Jesus, we put on his righteousness when we accept him, accept the price he paid for us, and now we're justified through Jesus, so it's just as we've never sinned. Jesus says you must be born again. Okay, let me do this. In the chapter 1 of Genesis, God says a seed must produce after its own kind. An apple tree can only continue to produce apple trees. Uh, a fig tree can only continue to produce fig trees. A corn seed can only make corn and more corn seeds. Adam and Eve before the tree, if they would have produced children, would only have been these children, holy and blameless. Pre-sin, no, no sin children. They sinned. Now you have Adam and Eve producing sin, so they have children, sinful children. Born into sin. That's the only thing they can produce now. Jesus comes, righteous, holy, blameless, my son who I'm well pleased with because he's walked this out. Jesus is called in Hebrews the second Adam. Jesus now says, you must be born again. When you're born again, you step from the sinful man, you step into the seed of Jesus, and you are now holy, blameless, predestined, forgiven, redeemed. You must be born again. You must step into that justification just as you never sinned. So now, when God looks at us, this is why he's pleased with us. Because he only sees us on this side of the tree. As if it never happened. It has to be that way. Jesus says, that's why you have to be born again. Born again isn't... born. Ag no, okay. Born again is being born of the seed of Jesus. Jesus said, he's the first of many. Follow me. If you follow me, you are this. I know there's many, here, many people here today that don't believe this, that don't believe they're holy and blood. It's not my sermon. It's just not. It's the word. This is who you are. I haven't heard an amen yet. There we go. <laughs> oh, I feel better now. <laughs> I thought maybe I was missing the mark. You know, if you go on into Ephesians 1 or 2, if you finish those two chapters, this is what it also says you were, that you're accepted. You can't be rejected. See, that's why you can't reject me. You may not like me, and I'm okay with that, but you can't reject me. I've been accepted by him. <laughs> that's my freedom. You're accepted, you are marked, you are alive. Jesus says, oh, what, what, what's the scripture? Lose your life, you'll find it. Keep your life, you'll lose it. When you lose your life, you become alive again. It also says you're saved. You are God's handiwork. Wow, that's pretty cool. You knew me in my mother's womb. I'm carefully knitted together by your very own hand. And we are also members of his house. What a better place to be than members of God's house himself. Oh, yeah. Um, I have plenty of time to do this, so I um, just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, we're just going to go. Thank you. And um, so uh, back in May... Uh, Missy and I, we uh, went to the Bahamas for a couple weeks, and um, I do a lot of scuba diving, and she gives me that pleasure. 
And um, so I've never been scuba diving and seen sharks. So the one time I'm down there and I saw like sharks like 50, 60 feet away. And they're, you know, I'm like, oh, I thought I'd be more nervous, you know. You know, and they swam by, no big deal. It's like, oh, I must be really faithful or something, you know, just, just not afraid. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, a couple times we did that. Well, then we went to another place in the Bahamas. And before we jumped in the water, uh, the, the, the dive master, he's like, okay, so when the sharks swim by, you don't touch them. And I'm like, well, how can I touch them? They're 50, 60 feet away. And uh, we get down in the water, and we're not down there a minute or two, and here's sharks but they're 20 feet, they're 15 feet, they're 10 feet. I'm like, oh boy, this is real. It's like, yeah, okay, so they're only six feet long or so, but I'm like, you know, in pieces I'd fit. (laughs) 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 And so I'm trying not to be really afraid, but at times they would like swim right at you, and then right at the last moment they'd go boom. And I'm like, oh boy, that's a close encounter of the shark kind. And, and was I afraid? Yeah, probably. <laughs> they were sharks. I mean, they're, they're sharks. And uh, so I'm diving along, and there's really nobody right around me now. And I'm probably six, eight feet off from the bottom uh, of the water, of the surface. And, and all of a sudden, on my leg, I felt, boom. I'm like, oh, boy. And I didn't even look. I was too scared to look. But it was a shark. I'm like, oh my gosh. But isn't that what life does sometimes? Life is, the, the enemy's like a shark. He'll come right at you for a while just to see if you're going to waver, and then he'll veer away. But every once in a while, the enemy, he'll bump you to see if you're going to move off your faith, to see if he can't rally you a little bit. And sometimes the enemy, he really does take a bite out of you. I mean, maybe losing a loved one, maybe someone's sick in your family, maybe something that, God, why are you allowing this, which is a whole other sermon. But things happen in life. Jesus says the same storm will come to those who build their house in the sand and on the rock. The same storm. It's just the house built on the rock will not be moved. So we had a little test. Well, actually, the week before, uh, we went on vacation uh, we buried my mom. And for the last couple of years, my mom's health has been declining. And, and I was the main caretaker, and I would take my mom regular to the doctor. And I learned to be comfortable talking about her full anatomy with the doctor. And that was kind of weird at first, but, you know, it's my mom. You're willing to do what you need to do. But, you know, it was such an honor, such a privilege, such a pleasure to take care of my mom in her last couple years. And I was there when she passed away. She was telling everybody two weeks before I'm going to pass away on Easter. It's like, who picks their date? My mom passed away two and a half hours after Easter ended. She was pretty darn close. But what an honor. See, the enemy was trying to rattle me. But what an honor to watch my mom, my mom step from the presence of being with me to step into the eternal presence of the Lord. My number one prayer for my parents all the time is they, they didn't have this, this full revelation that God is continuing to build in me, but they loved God with the full understanding that they had. And my prayer is, God, just give them a greater revelation of who you are in, in their life as they get closer to really being with you. And I watch my mom and dad get more understanding in the way God could work with them. And it was an honor to bury my mom, because you wouldn't talk her back here. You would never convince my mom to come back here. Um, So we had another little bump. The day before we were supposed to fly back from the Bahamas, back then, you don't know, but you had to test to see if you were COVID-free or not. I had COVID. I couldn't go home with my wife the next day. Misty flew home. I was stuck there. Bahamas says maybe up to 10 days. Our government said five, but the Bahama government ruled over the U.S. because that's where I was. So the day Misty left, they took me to another room at the resort, put me in the room, left, and didn't give me a key. 
I was quarantined in this room for, well, actually for seven days. And I thought, well, it's you and me, God. And I've made my mind up. Darkness cannot contain the light. I will get the light out. I know who I am. And this cannot knock me off this rock that you've built, that I stand on in you. First thing I did, is like, well, let's catch up on the Root River sermons. The first sermon I turned on was Pastor Mike up here with three amazing women. One was his wife. And Krista said this, one of the first things she said, oh, if I could just get an hour alone with the Lord. Six kids, seven coming. And all she really wants is just to get an hour alone. And I thought, I have days ahead of me. I will not misuse this. I never turned the TV on. Don't hear boasting in this. Hear, please hear humility. I never turned the TV on and said, it's you and me, God, till I go home. I have an opportunity to grow in you. I played worship music. I listened to mics, got caught up in my sermons. I listened to my favorite speakers and teachers. And, and okay, I walked 21,000 steps in my room every day. 14 this way, 14 that way. <laughs> So what they did is they put me on WhatsApp. If you know what WhatsApp is, it's like texting to the whole resort. So if I needed anything, that's how I could get a, bring, bring my meals up, bring a coffee up for me, anything like that. And I said, oh, that's my window to let the light shine. Because it went out to 25 different areas of the resort. So every morning they'd be like, good morning, my amazing Bahama family. Remember how much God loves you. Guys, thank you so much for taking good care of me. You guys are amazing. Always remember how much God loves you guys. Every day, I would just always respond like that. The last day when, when I was getting out, <laughs> I sent out this beautiful text. And just, guys, always remember God loves you guys so much. Thank you so much. I just poured into them because that was my window. Darkness cannot contain the light when you know who you are. Here's one response after that last text, and they, they knew I was going home. <laughs> Please hear humility in this, okay? From one lady. Thank you, Mr. Dobler. May God continue to bless, may God continue to bless you to bless others <laughs> with your kind heart. Darkness cannot contain the light, guys. From the head guy in charge of COVID and quarantine of the resort, he was the head guy that explained everything, and it, nothing happened without him. Mr. Dobler, I stand with you 100%. You have been the most positive guest that I've ever had the opportunity to assist during quarantine. Thank you for your kind words, patience, understanding during this time. I appreciate it more than words could ever express. Darkness cannot contain the light. No, yeah, thank you, but glory to God. Okay, this is the Lord. This is him. This is what we have an impact to do to people. We have to take an opportunity. When the storms come, that's our time to shine. See, the light doesn't get dimmer. Don't put the basket on and hide under it. Let the light shine because this is who you are. One lady says, can I meet you? I'm like, yeah. She came up to my room before I left. And she says, she, was, she says, I was on the bus at 4.30 this morning coming to work, and I was thinking about you. You were going home today. I wanted to meet you. And I said, can I hug you? Yes. I hugged her. I said, can I pray for you? Yes. I prayed a blessing over. And then we just stood in the doorway of my room, and we talked for several minutes. I said, you don't want to leave. She goes, No. I said, you feel him, don't you? She goes, I do. I said, he's been with me all week. It's been an amazing week, just him and me. She goes, that's amazing, Mr. Dobler. I had a connection on the flight home. I had a connection in Atlanta, and I had a five-hour layover. But there's a lot of people in Atlanta. <laughs> The Atlanta airport, they say, is one of the busiest in the world, and I had a lot of opportunity to love the people. I was sitting in a restaurant, and my server, okay, I'm doing good. My server, he came, and I ordered a burger, and we, we probably, through the whole 
it, in exchange of the order and my water, we probably didn't exchange 30 words. As I'm sitting there eating my hamburger, a word of knowledge came in my heart for him. And when he brought me the bill, I said, you're a writer. He goes, yes. And he just opened up and told me about all this thing he was working on in the series, and he wants Netflix to pick it up, and blah. And he, I couldn't shut him up, no. <laughs> and I said, how do you think I knew that? And he goes, you know, I had someone read my tarot cards not long ago, and they were predicting this stuff too. I said, how do you think I know? And he goes, I don't know. I said, God told me that about you, because that's a gift of writing that he gave to you. So when the doors open up for these things to happen in your life, you'll remember that God gave you that gift, and you can get to know him a little better. Wow, that's amazing. See, when you know who you are, and you get bumped by the enemy, when you get bit by the enemy, you don't have to be rattled. It's him. Let his light shine. And no matter how you feel on every day, remember who you are. I tell people, they, 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 I, I laugh in my heart because they, they ask me, how you doing, Gordy? I mean it, guys. I haven't had a bad day in almost seven years now. Not that bad things, as you see, don't happen to me. I mean, I was in faith. I'd never get COVID. I got COVID. What does that do to your faith? Not a dang thing. Because this is who I am. And I stand on the rock and I said, Father, I'll never get COVID again. Continue to help me grow in faith that it doesn't touch me again. That's because I know who I am. And that's who each and every one of you are. It's not that it's super Gordy, super Christian. No, it's what God will do in your heart and life if you let him die to yourself and you will live. Michaela, you can come up, please. I'm impressed I remembered her name. <laughs> so, Missy and I have been coming a little over two years here to Red River, and you guys have been amazing. You've just welcomed us in, and <clears throat> I know I come with my arms wide open, and some of you guys are a little uncomfortable, but you hug me anyway. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, it, I, we were probably here, I don't know, a number of months. And Pastor Mike, he says, yeah, he was talking about me. And, and he goes, yeah, you know, Gordy, w w w with the dorky smile. <laughs> you know, and, and, of course, it doesn't bother me. It's like, I know what he's saying. I, I know Krista was like, Mike. <laughs> You know what you said? And, uh, you know, but then I grew on Mike a little bit more. And so I got upgraded from a dorky smile to this goofy smile. And I took that as an upgrade. <laughs> but I'm just letting the light shine. <laughs> it's not a fake smile, guys. It's what he's done in my life. It's what he's died to do in your life. And you don't have to look like me. I mean, girls, please don't shave your head. It's just... Kevin, I'm glad you did. You look amazing. <clears throat> so anyway, I'll finish with this. I like to finish with lyrics of, of songs because songs are just so powerful. And uh, this was written by Brian and Jen Johnson out of Bethel Church. And it's just a, a, a few of the, the words out of the song. And it's called The One. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one, the one for whom you loved and gave your son. For humanity, increase my love. Oh, how he loves us from the homeless to the famous and the in-between. So help me to love with open arms like you do, a love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. Let my life tell of who you are and the, and the wonder of your never-ending love. Let my life tell of who you are. You are wonderful. You're such a good father. Help me to love with open arms like you do, a love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Guys, we need to know who we are so we can show the world who he is. 
Will you stand with me and let me pray over you? Father, we thank you for being here. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're working in hearts right now. Continue to open our hearts, our ears, our minds to the truth of who we are in you. The price that you paid, you saw us so highly valued that you were willing to give it all to redeem us back to be your sons and daughters. Help us to believe it, Lord, even when we don't feel it, Lord, because we want to show the world who you are in your never-ending love. In Jesus' name. Would you welcome my great and amazing friend, Jim. Thank you, Gordy. Uh, you know, as, as I stand up here and look out and see each and every one of you, you are God's masterpiece, and he loves you so much. Yeah, But it's all... God's word and uh, in Hebrews 4 verse 12 it says for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword it's piercing you even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart and there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give an account. Seeing then that we are, have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. And, Father, I thank you, uh, Jesus, a name above every name. He was always there for us and with us, leads us, guides us. And, Father, we just thank you. I thank you for each one you brought here today, Lord. I ask your blessing upon them. And we just thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. we got prayer in the front, fellowship in the back.